open access to the books and the records. We weren't told not to look at any transaction. Uh, so we did not have any difficulties in performing the audit. Uh, and we appreciate that cooperation from uh, district management and staff. Um, any questions on the communications before I get into more of the financial side? Okay. So on page three, we first go through a general fund trend. Uh, so this is simply your expenditures and transfers out versus your revenues and transfers in. So you can see for the year end of 2022, expenditures and transfers out did exceed revenues and transfers in by about $1.9 million. So this was a planned use of a capital reserve. So you're at, you authorize the transfer of about $2.5 million into the capital projects fund to fund upcoming capital projects. So it was a planned decrease um, in fund balance. Your, actual, your total fund balance went from about $19.8 million to $17.9 million. Um, on page four, and then on page five, we break down the components of fund balance. So you, you, there's different levels of restrictions. The green portion, about $11.3 million, are in legal reserves or res considered restricted for a specific purpose. Uh, the biggest reserves within that category, you have a, a $3.5 million uh, employee benefit reserve, about $3.2 million set aside for future retirement costs, um, and a $3.1 million in vehicle reserve or capital um, reserve. And then you also have a category about $4.6 million in assigned. Now, what that is, is primarily your appropriated fund balance in your current budget. So you had about $4.35 million that you appropriated to help balance that budget, um, keep the taxes at a reasonable level. Um, you know, very typical practice for, for school districts in New York State. Um, and then the remaining portion is unassigned. So this is your only truly available fund balance, about $1.85 million. And the reason that piece is important because you're subject to real property tax law on what you can hold as a school district in New York State. So you're limited to about 4% of your next year's appropriation. Uh, you were at about 3.73%. So you're within compliance in your unassigned fund balances uh, for the year ended June 30th, 2022. So overall, from a financial standpoint, uh, you're in a stable position. Um, certainly, you know, when we look at our districts this year, there's a lot of budget challenges going forward, a lot of focus on, um, also focus on cybersecurity risks out there. We see a lot of you know, highly publicized um, cyber attacks on government entities. So that's a concern um, for all districts. Uh, but just, you know, budgetary constraints, inflation, that's what we're seeing when you kind of project your budget going forward. But, uh, the district was in a, a stable financial condition as of June 30th, 2022. And again, no, no reportable findings uh, within our audit. Uh, any questions on the, the audit? Thank okay. you, Thanks, right. appreciate it. Thank you, appreciate your time. There's something on here on the baseball trip. Anybody here interested in talking about a baseball trip? A couple people over there. All right. Mr. Kuchillis, Mr. Colbert. Good evening. I would like to introduce, I'm very excited to introduce, C.J. Koenig, Justin Rufferman, and Coach Colbert, who will be presenting a proposal for our baseball team to travel to Cocoa Beach, Florida over spring break. teammate Justin Refermat. Before I start, I want to say thank you to Coach Colbert, Coach Crowley, my mother, Miss Koenig, and especially to the parents for helping with fundraising and keeping the baseball program moving. I also want to say thank you to Dr. Slipinski, Mr. Skachillis, Mr. Chef, and the rest of the school board. Our goal is to establish a program where a trip to Florida is going to kickstart our season. Why? Because we've been winning. Last year, we won a section championship for the first time in 53 years. We want to go to states and compete. Two years in a row, we've done very well, but we've fallen short. 
And we think a trip to Florida will help kickstart our season and solidify us as a state competitor. Our aspirations are going to the Space Coast Baseball Facility in Cocoa Beach, Florida. It will be April 1st to April 8th in 2023 over spring break with about 16 to 20 players and four to five coaches. This is a list of everything that um, this spring training trip is going to include. And when you look at this list, our number one thing is to compete against competitive teams from across the country. This is important because we want to play at an accelerated competition level, which is something we can't get from staying in our circle around Western New York. For example, one of the best teams around here, Lancaster, goes to this trip annually. As well, Coach Crowley is a credited source for going to this trip a couple years ago and had nothing but positive things to say. So on the slide, there is some multiple cultural experiences, but our cultural experience going down there would to be to see at least one college baseball game and take a tour of some college facilities and universities by their head coaches and their programs. And it is, in, it is a short drive to the world famous attractions such as the Cocoa Beach Pier, the Kennedy Space Center, and the Ron John Surf Shop. In Florida, we're going to be staying at the Hampton Inn Cocoa Beach Hotel. The necessities of a winning baseball team, number one, food. This is going to be an all-inclusive hotel. Number two, number two, sleep, beautiful hotel, beautiful rooms. Number three, recovery. On the property, there's a fitness center for proper stretching and warming up as a team. There's also an outdoor pool. gives one better way to recover from soreness and an injury. We also have aspirations to bring our trainer with us in case something happens. Some benefits of going down to Cocoa Beach are, like stated before, the, the better range of competition that we get to play instead of just staying in Western New York. Another benefit is to get some better temperature, because as we all know, up here in New York in April, it could still be snowing. So it gives us the opportunity to go play in nice warm weather in April. And it gives us a goal it gives us another goal to boost up on our championship aspirations. Yes, we won sections last year, but we would like to go to states and win it because we have the team for it, as we demonstrated last year, and only losing two of our guys and bringing in a whole bunch more gives us a very good opportunity to do that. So as we met with parents in June, Coach Crawley, myself, Mrs. Koenig, we looked at several different options. Coach Crawley being our ex expert, we decided on the Space Coast baseball trip, where if we look at the overall price tag of 16 players and four coaches, that uh, worked out to $17,908 for a total trip cost, minus the flights, which obviously we couldn't look into our book until the trip was approved. Uh, that worked out to $1,119.30 per player. Each parent understands the financial commitment. We had a meeting. We've had several meetings over the summer. And obviously, why we want to make this trip cost-effective for everyone. So the first thing that we looked at is how do we offset the cost of this trip. And number one is to apply for the Florida tax exemption. That would result in a discount of nearly $2,000 for our players. And if we look, the paperwork on that link is actually right up there. Every program that comes to the Space Coast facility applies for that exemption, and they have been getting that exemption with the proper uh, paperwork filed. Uh, then we have our great group of parents that are sitting across the audience who formulated a booster club. And they are working on fundraisers that include the Buffalo Bills football squares throughout the season, playoffs, Super Bowl. Uh, they also wish to extend that out to the World Series NCAA pools. Uh, a meat raffle held in February, a parent's night out, a chicken barbecue. And then we're looking at getting donations from corporations and sponsors throughout the business community. None of these events will be held on site. None of our students will be around anything that would make our baseball
program fall in a different light. So all of these events will be done by our parent booster club who are scattered throughout here. Our attempt, our goal, is to make this cost zero dollars for every student athlete at the Pew High School. Thank you. So it brings us to our consolidated grant discussion, Mr. D'Amato. So tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to sit up here and do a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to teach think. I'm going to do a lesson. It's been, Lord, 20, 25 years since I've taught anything. We're going to do a little lesson on the Consolidated Grant. Um, I, I'm also going to do it through a tool that many of our teachers use called ThinkTech. ThinkTech is a piece of software that was developed in Buffalo. Um, and, and the man behind it is the former middle school principal, Scott Martin, of Sweet Home. Um, this is all Buffalo developed. Uh, we were on the ground floor as a district, one of the first districts to use it. It is something that our teachers use often. Okay, so hopefully technology is my friend. And I need all of you to either take out your cell phone or your device. And people in the audience who want to do this, you're welcome to. If you would go to the URL, join gothinktech.com. And you should get to the login page. You're going to put your name in. Of course, we're going to keep it school friendly. Disney Raider. And the ID code is down 96. So join dot go think tech. That's one word. Dot com. Put your name in. And then down 96. So once you do that, there should be a question there. What was the lesson code again? All right, good. I've got confirmation that it actually works. It's a good thing. All right, so let's take about 30 seconds to answer this. It's a complete statement with the best answer. And what you know or what from what you know, the consolidated grant is a grant given to all LEAs, a grant that Of course, I can't read these because the font's too small. Oh, okay, we're getting some different answers. I'm unsure. Good to be honest. Oh, and there will be a test at the end. Just saying. Okay, so here. All right, so your choices are a grant given to all LEAs through the Every Child Succeeds Act. One that's a grant that supports math and ELA instruction, professional development, ESL, safe and effective schools. A grant that is shared with private schools that have to queue students. All of the above are I'm unsure. Let's take 30 more seconds. We need more time. All right, let's see. Now we're going to take a pause so we can't go on. At least I think that's what's doing. All right, so the consolidated grant is all of the above. It is something that comes through the Every Child Succeeds Act. Um, it is specifically targeted on math and ELA. 
Um, it's for supplies, professional development, coaching. Um, it supports English as a second language. Um, it, it supports technology integration, safe and effective schools. Um, and we do share it with some of our private schools. All right, let's, so let's talk a little bit about this grant. There are five titles in the grant. So the first title, Title I, it, that's the one that's focused primarily on math and ELA. As in Depew, that money is targeted at Cuba Heights Elementary. It's based on our free and reduced numbers, and we use that money to bolster our programs. Its purpose is to supplement what our budget already provides for. So we, we don't supplant, we don't take over something, it's to add to. So we do Readers and Writers Workshop in the queue. It pays for much of the classroom supplies. It covers training for our teachers. Um, it can cover conferences. Um, right now we have three reading teachers that it supplies money for. Um, and other stipends like um, our ESSA parent coordinator position, the stipend for our dean of students. Um, and, and this is the largest of the grants that we received through the consolidated grant. Any questions on Title I? All right, good. All right, and Title I is shared with private schools that have children that qualify economically as well as academically. Whether they live, just as long as the student lives in our district, we share it. The other titles do not work that way. So Title II, Title II is focused around professional learning. Um, it funds our mentoring program, much of the, many of the activities we do with that, like our, our new, um, new teacher academy we've run for the last year and about a half, where we have opportunities for teachers to learn after school time. Um, because it's so hard to get subs. Um, we, again, can buy outside consultant time with this. Um, and this is only shared with private schools within our district. Does anybody know how many private schools we have within our boundaries? That's a bonus, bonus question. Three? Anybody else? Within our attendance zone? Zero. DePue Union Free School District has no private schools, I know, within our attendance zone. Do we have some in the town? Oh yeah, but they're not in our school district. So we don't share this money with them. That is not one of the criteria. We also do some things with steam supplies in Title II. Title III is solely for our ESL program. It's based on the number of students that we have as English language learners. So it varies. This is the smallest grant that we get. So we put it into a consortium with Erie One BOCES. They provide training for all of our teachers because one of the things the state requires is that the newer certified teachers have at least 15 hours of ESL training every five years. So they provide that. The money's also put together into a pile to get more buying power for supplies. We ran a summer school program with it two summers ago. So we have a lot of latitude with that. Um, and again, it is only for students from Depew and students in private schools within Depew, so we don't have to share that. Title IV. Title IV is another one we don't have to share because we have no private schools. And there's three categories for Title IV. Effective use of technology. So we can use that to buy Chromebooks or iPads or flat panels. I, we purchased a couple in the last few years, the touch screens for our classrooms. Safe and healthy students. This covers a wide variety of topics. We use it for a suicide prevention curriculum. For some of our leadership classes, we use it for curriculum um, for that. Uh, we have one of the most cutting edge health curriculum, that's what I'm told. It was originally started by through the PEP grant, but we've encumbered that into this because 
It's top of the line, it's constantly updated, it's digital, and it's paper. Uh, and, and so Title IV supplies that. Well-rounded educational opportunities is the third and final category. And again, that, would, that helps with our Wildcat prep program, um, supplying some money for, for supplies, it gives money for field trips. Um, our middle school program, um, we have the Innovation Station. It gives money for their field trip for Innovation Station. Um, so the three categories again, effective use of technology, safe and healthy students, and well-rounded educational opportunities. Um, any questions on Title IV? Right. Title V is the last one. Uh, it's the least, least amount to say. This is for migrant students. We have none, we got no money. But there are five titles that we operate with. Um, and every year it's an application process. This money is guaranteed. Okay, let's see if you're paying attention. We are gonna take a little, we're gonna do a little sorting activity. I think you can see it. So you're supposed to sort the cards that you see on your screen under the appropriate title name. Let's give ourselves two minutes for that. We have seven people still playing. <coughs> About 30 seconds. I neglected to click the button that says show correct answers. So I'll give you the correct answers in an email. In looking at it, I mean, you can see that somebody had 100% on Title IV, right? 50% of Title I. There is some overlap in what these cover. This person's doing very well, 85%. All right, let's take a pause. Okay, so the last thing that I'm done in the end of the test. Um, so all this is done, it takes the entire summer to do. And we start in May. And there's a big application process and many hands touch it. So we develop our application every year from scratch. And I do this in concert with our instructional leadership teams, which is all of our department chairs across the district, all of our teacher leaders. We do it through CDEP, which is our basically our strategic planning team. It's sort of like a district-wide shared decision-making team. 
which all of you are welcome to come to anytime you want. And then I have to consult with students, paraprofessionals, and specific categories of teachers and get all these things signed off, as well as um, the Boys and Girls Club, our private school partners that want to participate. We have a meeting with the, I have a meeting with each one of them during the summer to sort of set out their budget and their per pupil allotment. And the last thing that happens before Dr. Stepinski hits submit is the president of the school board signs off on it because I need to have somebody from like local government. So once we get all that done, I upload all our budgets, all our narratives, and then it gets submitted, it takes till October, November before the state tells us if I filled the forms out right. Um, it, the money's there, it's, all, it's, it's there waiting for us. It's just a matter of making sure we answer the questions for the state and federal government correctly. All right, so before I put you to your final test, any questions? So, we're going to have the board do the test, so we'll move on there. Also, folks, just to read, I'm sorry. If the board members are finishing up their test there, it's important for the community to know that we get about a half million dollars each year that supports these programs across the district for our students. And I want to compliment uh, Joe and the team and all the teachers that contribute towards that. So, thank you very yes, much. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, go ahead and take your final quiz. So while I was building this, I tried to highlight all the different tools that Think Tech offers for our teachers to use in class. This can be done as an individual assignment, it can be done as a group assignment, it can be done as a homework assignment. I think if, if you ask the students, they've seen this once or twice. Or too much. So you can finish this at your own pace, but I'm going to finish up so we can move along with the, with the uh, presentations tonight and the board meeting. Thank you for indulging me. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. First public forum. This is the time in the board meeting agenda when district residents may address the Board of Education with their concerns. Each resident is up to three minutes to address the board. A total of 50 minutes will be allowed for each public forum. This public forum is for items that are on the agenda. Any district residents wish to address the board? Thank you. And now I have a motion from the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Any questions on the items in the consent agenda? Ladies and gentlemen? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried.
just want to point out a few things on the consent agenda that we just voted and approved. We have several people here that were appointed to the 10-year area of teacher assistant. I don't know exactly who's here. There's Noel Urquhart, Aaron Johnson. Who's Sorry about that. Noel? Noel. Noel. Noel, I'm sorry. Hi, Noel. Hi. Okay. Uh, Aaron Johnson and Catherine Coyne. Again, congratulations. Welcome. And I uh, also want to recognize uh, our new school lunch manager, Joseph Meddy. Hi, Joe. How are you? A round of applause for everybody here. Thank you. I have a motion of the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the Superintendent be a resolved that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the Superintendent the District Audit Committee hereby accepts draft independent financial audit report pending that there are no material changes for the year ending June 30th, 2022 as presented by Drescher and Malecki LLP. So, second. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. That motion is carried. We have a motion to the Board of Education by the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the request from Girl Scout Troop 34656 to approve their not for profit status and waive all fees to use designated facilities. So moved. Second. Any questions? Any motion carried. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Number three. They okay, approve the, I have a motion by the Board of Education by the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the Depew High School music students and staff to travel to Chicago on May 20, 2023 through May 23rd, 2023. The purpose of this trip is to afford our students the opportunity to visit several historic landmarks, to have musical performances and workshops, and also perform as a group at the Museum of Science and Hancock Observatory. The only cost for the district will be the cost of substitute teachers the chaperones for the three days of school. Second. Question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. I have a motion of the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the Depew baseball team and staff to travel to Cocoa Beach, Florida on April 1st, 2023 through April 8th, 2023. The purpose of this trip is for team building, preparation for the 2023 season, Build upon our aspirations of becoming a state championship competitive team. All at once. I'll be second. Any questions? Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Good time, guys. Just make you just, guys better win. Yeah. <laughs> just keep an eye on Mr. Colbert, of course. Oh, yes. Okay. That's all. Oh yeah. That's that's the one condition. Okay. Okay. I don't know who gets that lucky job. All right. We have a motion to the Board of Education about the we have a motion to the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent to accept the donation in the amount of one hundred dollars from the JSC. Management group to be used for DHS character education accounts. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. I think that's it for new business. Correct? Uh, discussion items. Uh, yeah. Trustee Bush. So in my district in, in North Tonawanda, we have a, a student on the school board, non voting member. Um, I thought it'd be a great idea to maybe have a discussion about possibly having a student member on the Depew board. Um, it would be great to get their perspective on things, uh, give them a voice. Um, Mrs. Jeffords runs a leadership program. Um, you know, there's possibly a student from there would like to attend, or I'm not sure how to go about like having this. There is a uh, Erie County School Board Association um, student leadership meeting. 
or like not really a meeting, it's a dinner. It's a dinner. A dinner. Um, so student school board reps from around Western Europe will be getting together, and there's a uh, feature presentation of a young man who, one year after graduating, made it on the school board in Iroquois. Uh, he now works with Senator Schumer's office. I thought it'd be a great idea to, to possibly have a student on the board to for a voice. Different perspective. Different perspective. Uh, they can give us things that insight that we we don't see or can't see. Okay. Um, I had the. Uh, I attended the finance uh, committee meeting this past, uh, it was last week, and we had about 15 reps there, and they were talking about, uh, so on the agenda, they were talking about the student leadership dinner. And I would say out of about the 15 districts that were there, I think eight or nine said they had the student leadership on the board, and it, it, all I heard was positive things about it. About good, kind of all the things you pointed out about having a student uh, perspective on it, it was good for the students. Some of them had, one like permanent person, some of them had kind of a rotation. It was kind of similar to how we have our building updates. It was kind of a rotation of kids that came in, into it. So it looks like our counterparts in the uh, area have a couple different ways to uh, do it so we wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel to put it on. But they, out of the eight or nine groups that, or districts that had it that were at the meeting, all had very positive things to say about it. thought I had on it might be slightly different idea than having like a permanent board member, but last week is uh, Dr. Spitsky does a super tense report for Hansel Shepherd's group. The student leadership did rotate the type of person who come and give us a student's perspective report every meeting. It might be a little less formal, but I think it might be a little more practical, uh, especially since it's a good chunk of the year. There are no students uh, here, so that we run into the three months. It's just another option to consider. I think it's similar to that. Idea. So. Is this something we could possibly throw out to the students and, and see if anybody would be interested or willing? Or I kind of think you put it on the student leadership. Let them decide. I mean, they got elected. That's their role. I don't think we need to have like a general thing. I think they can decide if they want to have a general thing. Yeah, turn it over to them if they want to have them propose an idea. Yeah, maybe have them kind of come up with what they think the best option would be for them, or the option they want to maybe participate in, whether it's kind of like the rotating group or one person or what have you. I think, though, that. Todd, you brought it up, Trustee Bush. I think the board should take the lead in regards to that. You know, what we think we want to do. And then, if we think we want a student representative, then we make a motion to enact something or put something in motion that we're going to explore the process. I don't know if Dr. Spitz, what your, your thoughts are on that, but we think that having an addition for seven months, right? We think that having somebody here on a regular basis, I hear you, what you're saying, Pat. So, um, we should explore that further. About that is another point. I mean, I, I think it's our idea, not our idea, but that it's, you're discussing it. I think to have it put it on the students to figure it out is really probably not the I, I think it's the best course of action. I definitely want their input and see what we can discuss that with them, but I don't know if we want them to. Uh, this is what we're thinking. We want to open this up. Uh, would anybody be interested? Please apply. But we, I think we need to create the parameters and what we want this to do. We can have a discussion. A separate discussion, perhaps, on what we want that to look like. Um, I think it would be wise to have some representation at the dinner so we can learn a little bit more about what the other schools are doing, perhaps gather some of the guidelines that the other schools are doing. Um, I can uh, work to identify those schools and get that information for the board to help, help them make a better decision on where you should go. Oh, your school does it, so yeah. Yeah, keep your log so I think we gather that information, and then that, again, we'll put it out to our student leaders um, in the district once we know, and I think you're correct, what, what is it that we're looking for? What, 
what's the participation, what's in it for the students, how's that going to enhance our school board? I think all those questions that you mentioned before you actually put it out to the student body. I know when um, I was at the meetings, um, I believe it's Kenmore. Um, this is a big program for them, and they go through um, an application process, and, and they have everything already kind of laid out, so they might be one to kind of really uh, lean on to see what their whole process looks like. They might be a good starting point um, because it is an actual position, and I know that they go through a very big application process, and it's they talked about um, how it's it's a very prestigious thing, and, and students are very excited. They, they go through an election and everything, so they might be one to get an idea of what that looks like for them, and maybe talk to several schools so that you know, we can kind of peer it down to see what we want what ours to look like and what we want, how big or how small we want to start, and then build from there. It's the pleasure of the board. I'll reach out uh, to the Erie County School Boards Association, uh, put out the ask for the information, and then present that information to um, the, the board. Uh, is there an individual or two that wish to take the lead on exploring this model of bringing it back? I got it. Well, I don't know. idea, too. Guys with the beards? Sure. All right. <laughs> the magnificent beards. Guys with the beards. Dr. Sapinski, I just checked the minutes just to um, check real quick on it from the domain I was at. It looks like there's some kind of September 22nd deadline to express interest in going to the dinner. That's correct. The dinner is October 6th. If, if any of the board members are interested in attending, just let um, Ms. Nigel uh, know, please, and we'll make sure we get it reserved. Report. Yes, Doctor. Just a, a few items. Uh, first of all, I want to um, thank uh, Mrs. Arena and uh, City our, our District Treasurer for the outstanding work they did this past year to uh, have our uh, uh, audit come in clean. Uh, an outstanding report there. Uh, opening our schools went very, very well. Uh, a few hiccups here and there, but the buildings and grounds did a great job. Our bus drivers, food service, instructions, administration, everything flowed, and it felt really, really good to have our students back in the building. It's, it's outstanding. Um, beginning to see our club's activities, our athletic programs are getting into full swing. Uh, watching all that leadership development take place, the students expressing themselves outside the classroom. Um, I want to thank all the teachers and uh, students that have welcomed me. I had a chance to read to some kindergartners, and I've uh, participated in a couple of activities. And students are regular visitors to the office now, and even Sandy comes to visit me for a biscuit now and then. She's our uh, therapy dog here from high school. So, um, And uh, just a heads up to the board, um, please know that we may be having a, a work session and look for an update on the capital project that we're working on right now. We're getting to the final phases of that proposal that will go to state ed that should be taking place in the next couple of weeks. And also, um, as you saw on the board uh, update last week, we'd like you to take a look at uh, November 8th as a possibility of a presenting my entry plan findings. What have I discovered about the district? What do I see? What do we want to celebrate? And what are some areas that are some opportunities for us to grow? Um, looking at the possibility of November 8th, um, please let Mrs. Nigel know if you're available on that evening as well. That's all. Thank you. Any comments or remarks by board members? Trustee Duty. I had the opportunity in August, um, at the end of August, with Dr. Stepinski. Him and I went over to um, the bus garage. Um, I had asked to um, go with him and uh, meet with um, Carrie Turner, who is um, the supervisor over at the bus garage. And that's just an area that's always kind of fascinated me, um, as well as I know puzzled me. Um, because you tend to see, like, sometimes you see a couple buses going up and down streets and you're wondering like why do I see two buses when some students are getting picked up on one side like why is that happening and um, like you have questions to that um, but I'm also a mathematics person and I kind of like to know like how is that all figured out so um, I'd ask Dr. Stupinski if we could 
go and meet with her and she was very open and so we sat for an hour and a half and it was very um, eye opening and it was pretty amazing to sit there and just to see what has to go into um, all of the um, transportation and, and routing students and it was just pretty amazing. So I thought I would share some of the things that um, we found out that morning and um, she said that if anybody wants to um, see what goes on or has questions, please feel free to reach out to her um, and she'd be happy to go through anything um, with you. So here's some of the information that we um, found out. Um, some of the routing, routing is extremely tedious. I thought it was just a matter of like, put a student in and they just get a bus and, and off we go. But um, it was very complex. Um, but luckily we do have a really good program um, that Todd is able to use and um, he puts the student in and it goes through and, and puts them in a little um, dot on the computer and, and it lets them know how many other students there are and, and how many students are actually on the bus and it's pretty amazing. Um, there's a lot of factors though that have to be considered. So once he puts that student into the system though, he has to be there to kind of see what's going on because that computer's just putting in students. So our buses technically hold 66 elementary students or 44 middle school and high school students. Um, every time a new student comes in though, um, we have to account for that new student and it's kind of like dominoes. Um, the buses have to be redone every time you put in a new student there. Um, but one thing that was very helpful this summer was the surveys that went out um, because it allowed them to kind of see how many students actually needed transportation. So that was very, very beneficial to them. Um, so keep in mind um, and watch for those next summer to come out. Um, new student enrollment. So as those students come in and transfer, everything gets affected. Um, the capacity and the stop times are affected by those enrollments. Um, sometimes certain neighborhoods uh, require two buses on the same street because there are so many students in that one area. So that's why you might see um, buses coming up and down the streets. Um, we have to account for the fact that we take into the private parochial uh, charter and any special needs schools, we have to service those schools as well. We're responsible for providing transportation for students who go to approximately 44 other schools. So you may see those buses coming up and down your street, and that's on top of 18 in-district routes and only having about 40 uh, bus drivers and four subs. Routes must be one and a half miles or more in order for us to receive funding. So some routes have to go out further to account for the distance needed. While there's no law limiting the amount of time a student can be on a bus, we make every attempt to keep our students at around 45 minutes or less on an in-district route and under 90 minutes in those out-of-district routes. So those going to private schools sometimes have to be on a bus a little bit longer. Um, buses can't always turn around on dead-end streets, and so for safety reasons, they're not routed to go down those streets. Students are assigned to stop at the end of the street. Um, the transportation department's goal is to provide your child with a safe environment on and around the bus while the bus driver gets your son or daughter to school in the most efficient way possible. Um, our bus drivers are hired and put through a very rigorous training process. They go through a minimum of 26 hours of training on the road before they take their road test. They also have classroom training and go through a recertification process and testing yearly. All transportation personnel is regulated by New York State, DOT, DMV, and New York State Ed, as well as the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Our fleet is inspected by the state twice a year and our mechanics complete the preventative maintenance checks on each vehicle on a 35 to 45 day rotation. So I really urge you to call and talk to the person or the department you might have questions or concerns with. Asking questions is the best way to learn about something you are unfamiliar with. Learning the why behind something often helps us to understand so much. It really was probably the best hour and a half I could have spent 
um, just taking that time to really understand what was going on. So thank you to Harry and Todd and everybody in whether it's the bus garage or all the different departments that really um, help us out um, every single day. It really does make a difference. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Duty. Anybody else? Um, I know we thought this year would be normal compared to other years, um, but due to COVID, I think uh, social, emotional, and physical health of students, adults, everybody involved, it's going to take a long time uh, to really get back to normal. So I saw a lot of students this year in my school district, a lot of adults still struggling. Uh, if you are struggling, your student, please see somebody. Uh, there are, social workers, counselors, uh, trusted adult. Um, it's okay to not be okay. And uh, I'm hoping that we'll do everything we can to help you. I have a couple things. I have a flyer here. Just I want to go on record. It's a car seat check. Saturday, September 24th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Q schools, Q police, and New York State police invite you to do a free child car seat check. Is your child's car seat safe? Stop by and find out. I assume you can do it out front here, so just keep that in mind. I also want to thank Trustee McLoyne for bringing something to my attention. We sent a couple emails my way. Uh, resolutions are sent to NISBA, which are voted on at their annual business meeting, and then those are going to go to the annual meeting, you know, which is in October, so on and so forth. And we haven't done. We really haven't done that, explored that, even submitted one to my knowledge in the past since I've been on the board. So I think going forward, uh, we'll look at that and be more proactive. We can't be involved in that as well. At least review them as a board, see what's out there. And I appreciate you know, Trustee McCoy for bringing that up. You know, we'll, uh, we'll look into getting on that earlier. If we can't get the information sooner, uh, then we can discuss it, even if we have to do it in a separate meeting. Okay. So appreciate that. I see what's next public forum okay this is the time of the board meeting agenda with district residents may adjust the board of education with their concerns each resident is up to three minutes to address the board a total of 15 minutes will be allowed for each public forum this public forum is for items that are not on the agenda anybody here okay uh we're going to go into executive session before we vote on that uh anyone who's here that needs credit for being here i don't know so if you need credit, uh, Abby Gamble said to come up forward and we'll get all your forms signed. So she doesn't want to stay any longer and I have no problem with that. So come get your form signed and we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> well, whoever comes up.
from executive session. Thank you, trustees, for sticking around. Uh, I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools. The Board of Education of the Pew Unit Free School District hereby terminates the employment of Lynn King from her position as a senior clerk typist effective immediately. So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion is carried. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. That motion is carried. Have a lovely evening.